Now on the flyer, you had there where we were gonna discuss some scenarios that try to prepare us for certain things. And let me just say, there is no way you can prepare for every scenario that is out there. Uh, the best way to prepare for any possible scenario you might run into is knowing who you're studying with. What I mean by that is this, if you know you're studying with someone, just for sake of example, who is a Baptist, learn all you can about the Baptist faith so you can be prepared for whatever question or scenario may arise. Because there's so many different things that can arise in any Bible study that there's no way to be prepared for everything, but you can be prepared for some things. You know, just <laughs> for example, uh, I went to pick up dinner last night at a fast food place. I won't tell you the name, but it had the word taco in it. But um, when, we, when I walk into the door to, to get the order, uh, there was someone else, two ladies already there, and you know, I told the person I'm here to get a mobile order, and I kind of stood back and waited. And uh, there were two ladies, and one became quite upset. I guess she had been there for a while. And she walked behind the counter and began to talk to the, one of the managers. And I thought, oh, this is about to get really ugly. I have never seen that before. And I've been in a lot of Taco Bells, okay? And I've never seen that before. And I said, say, you cannot prepare for every scenario. There's no way. There's anything can happen in a Bible study. Anything can happen uh, in a worship service. You know, like I was telling Zach and Sarah before, when I was at Glover's Chapel years ago, I stood up to give a sermon, and just as I started, a boy came running right down the aisle, and I said, that's the fastest you know, response I've ever had. I laughed, the mother did not. But again, you can't prepare for every scenario, but you can anticipate certain things. And when I was in school, and maybe Zach and I have heard this before, um, I think the biggest thing to me is to prepare for and know how to handle emotional responses. Because, because we're talking about evangelism, we're talking about people's souls, things can get emotional. And that's putting it mildly. Sometimes it's emotional with tears, sometimes it's emotional with anger. And so you have to decide how you're going to react uh, to that. I will say you cannot respond to anger with anger. It doesn't work. You shouldn't respond to emotionalism with tears with emotionalism with tears. But there are three words that I, I think about when I think about how to address any scenario. And I may be stepping on anything that he wants to add here in a second. And I know we're supposed to be done by 2 o'clock, so we'll keep this short. But there's three words I want you to think about. Feel, felt, and found. Do you remember any of this? Um, Brother Darren Chapel, when, when, we when I was at BAM, he was still there, and he brought this up, and, and, and it stuck with me. Feel, feel, felt, and found. What I mean by that is this. When someone becomes, starts responding to, to your study in whatever way, it's going to be emotional to some degree. And at some point in our lives, we can tell, we can tell, we can tell them, but at some point in our lives, we, can, we know how they feel about what you're talking about. All of us, we're, none of us have been Christians all of our lives. At some point, we were not a member of the church. And so at some point, we were in a, ser we were in a worship service, hearing a sermon. We were in a Bible study. So we can say that we know how they feel, right? To have a Bible study, to have a something, uh, something uh, Bible-related affect them. We know how they feel, right? Do you remember how you, fit, how you felt when you were studying the Bible and wanting to obey the gospel? Do you remember how it felt when certain things really began to prick your heart? That's why I say we can tell them we know how you feel about whatever it is because we can say I have felt that way about certain other things. But here's the difference. The last one is key. We can tell them we know how they feel. I once felt that way before, but we can't stop there. Because we need to tell them and encourage them and remind them that when we study the scriptures with an open heart and an open mind, this is what I have found to be the truth. And so feel talks about what they are currently feeling. Felt is letting them know that, hey, we have been in a similar place before that they are in right now. And we can remind them and encourage them that when we open the Bible with an open heart, an open mind, we can say that 
this is what I have found. Now, I try sometimes to talk about my, my Bible study that I have and my fun law, and sometimes it's very hard for me to do because I get a little emotional about it. I've gotten, <laughs> as I get older, I get more and more emotional. I don't know why, whatever. But anyway, but I can remember in, in that Bible study how I felt about certain things, and I got pretty emotional even now a little bit. And I was, and it, I didn't get, what's interesting was I didn't become angry with Chuck, that's who it was. <laughs> I didn't become angry with Chuck. I wasn't angry with Lisa or anyone else. I was angry because I felt like I had, these were things I'd never heard before, and I felt like these things had been hidden from me for a while. And I remember going home after that, because it was only two studies, um, which is remarkable for a hard-headed Baptist at the time. But anyway, um, I went home, and I remember thinking about those things and what was interesting was I came, I was really kind of in a feel, felt, and found to myself. I just didn't know it. It was when I was trying to convince myself I could stay where I was and be just, fu just fine. I'd go back to what we talked about and the things that we found in Scripture, and I realized I couldn't stay where I was. And so that's why I say that this feeling and f this feel, felt, and found really can help us understand where people are and help us get them to using God's word to where they need to be. Because we're dealing with emotional things. We're dealing with various scenarios that can come up. We have to be those who are patient enough to understand that, hey, we weren't always a Christian. At some point, we were where they are currently. That is outside the body of Christ. We, not, we may not have been living like they were, like they are currently, but we have once been outside the body of Christ. So we remind them that we have once felt that way about at least certain things. But always encourage them to go back and to open up their Bibles and show them what can be found from the scriptures and help us understand where we need to be. Any questions about that? <laughs> That's my scenario to, to think about. And uh, do you have anything you want to add to that? Okay, I know, I know uh, Mike wanted us to talk about some different scenarios, but there's so many of, so many of them that you really can't prepare for everything. And like I said before, if, if you know your prospect, who you're talking to, you can kind of work to be prepared before certain things come up. And I put it this way, and I don't say this to pick on the Baptist, it's just who I'm familiar with, it's what I was involved in for so long. But once saved, always saved, will always come up in the Bible study of the Baptist. Always. Mechanical instruments will always come up in that Bible study. Uh, you know, the Methodist Church, you'll have members of the Methodist Church, you'll have certain things come up as well. And so what I think in many ways is the hardest to prepare for is not necessarily those who've come out of, who are in a denomination, you're trying to help them see the truth and come out of denominationalism, but those who have no religious affiliation whatsoever. I don't mean just the atheist, because they fall in that category as well, but for those who just, you know, church is not part of who they are. They're not atheists, so to speak, but church is just not who they are. And so they're the hardest ones, I'd say, to prepare for, because we don't know where, where they're at. But that's really kind of, that really can be solved <laughs> in some ways by getting to know that person better before you get into that Bible study. If there's ever a time with the idea of becoming friends with someone to, to try to help to, one, because they're, you know, maybe they're, they're enjoyable to be around, that's fine, but we want to ultimately have a study with them at some point. If not us, then maybe someone else can, right? Because it may, be, it may come to the point where we realize that I won't be able to have a Bible study with this person but maybe someone else over here who has a little better luck than I do for whatever reason, maybe they can have a Bible study with them. Maybe they look at this person differently. Maybe they look at this person as a father figure, and so they're willing to sit down and talk with them. Well, hey, whatever, do it, right? But the better we prepare ourselves as we talk to people and get to know them, the easier it will be to, to uh, expect and overcome any scenario that we may come in contact with. And I would encourage you that as you talk to people about the Bible, about the church in general, trying to work towards that Bible study, to don't be afraid to ask others for advice to how you could talk to someone about those things. You know, 
Brother Goring has been, has been a preacher and been a Christian for a long time. He has a lot more experience than I do about things. And so if I ever have a question about something, I'm not going to hesitate. Hey, <laughs> what would you do in this situation when you're trying to talk to this person? You know, my father-in-law being there in Claremore, I've picked his brain plenty of, t- plenty of times about different things. Uh, because there's nothing wrong with asking for help because the goal is not trying to do things on our own so we can brag. It's about getting someone to hear the gospel so they have a chance to obey it. And so scenarios aside, we have to be prepared. That's the best way to address any scenario that may come up. And still we're going to be surprised uh, from time to time. But I think that the feel, felt, and found, I think in many ways addresses a lot of that. And knowing who you're talking to before you get into uh, too far into any possible Bible study. Questions, comments, concerns? Do you have anything you want to add now? Yeah, okay. So something that he's mentioned, the various scenarios, and something that he made mention in his first lesson that maybe we didn't focus as much on today, but part of reaching the lost is reaching those who were once here who no longer are. That's part of being evangelistic too. And knowing them and knowing the situation is so important. I couldn't help but think about uh, Jude verses 22 and 23. And some of them have compassion making a difference and others save with fear, pulling them out of fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. And so really just the idea of whatever scenario that you find yourself in as far as personal evangelism, have this book with you. Know where that person is, where that person is coming from, and having God's word with you can really ultimately help prepare you for those situations. But as Russ has already alluded to, there's so many situations that could come up or might come up. You can't sit and and game plan them all, but pray about it. And in your studies, stick to this. And if you do that, you'll be able to answer most of the questions uh, that come your way. But I really don't have any scenarios, but I just wanted to make mention of that passage there in Jude. Any? Right. When you look at most people that respond to the gospel, it's not because they just wandered into the church building. It's because people went out. And that's how they were doing it in the book of Acts. Uh, They were going out. They weren't just waiting on people to come to them. Uh, I think I see another hand up here. Clee? Yeah, one of the things you have to remember, too, and this has happened to me in the past, you've got to make sure and avoid allowing the conversation to go to an I think ask you for your opinion, you might try to dissuade that and say, well, let's listen to what the Bible says and stick to that. Yes. So if it boils down to your opinion versus theirs, you're going to lose every time. That's right. And in a Bible study, I don't want to give anybody my opinion anyway, because when we stand on Judgment Day, they're not going to be judged by my opinions. They're not going to be judged by Russ's opinions or Bill's opinions or Mike's opinions. They're judged by the Word of God. And so it's so important to to be prepared. And that's why, you know, one of the things we mentioned is, you know, knowing the scriptures and then knowing the material that you're going to present. And that can really help with a lot of those situations. You know, each situation is different. You know, you talk to one individual and I was talking with Bill earlier. He said he has no issue going up and talking to someone on the street, but sometimes family is hard. Other people, they have no trouble talking to their family, but man, get them to go knock a door. You can't get them to do it. And so that's why we have to work to people's strengths. And that's why really working as a congregation to do evangelism is better than just a select member here and a select member there. Anything else? Every preacher here will enjoy this one. When you're asked the question, do you believe you're the only ones going to heaven? Uh, You know, I was asked that about two weeks after I was baptized by one of the youth ministers I'd grown up with in the Baptist church for years. 
Uh, he asked me that, and we were we were in a game store looking at video games. He happened to be in there, and I talked to him. We were leaving. I was in my car, getting ready to leave, and he popped off. Oh, by the way, do you think your own one's going to heaven? <laughs> and I answered that then probably the same way I'd answer now. Um, I believe, as we look at the Bible, that only those who obey the Bible get to go to heaven. And that's how I address that. And, you know, many times when people say, well, if that goes any further than that, that would encourage them to sit down and have a study with you. Because in the Bible we find there's only one church. Not everyone in the church gets to go to heaven because there are some who are not living as they should. You claim to be members. But if you're going to go to heaven, the church is the only place those individuals are found. And that's something we can study together about. And so uh, there's a lot of people who ask that in sincerity, and some ask that just out of spite and ugliness. Uh, but, you know, there's a reason why people are members of, of Baptist Church and Methodist churches, too, because they believe they're the only ones right as well. They may not say that, but that's really what it boils down to as well. People attend certain places for reasons, whether they're not they're willing to admit that uh, or not. Are you going to say something? Yeah, you know, one of the things that is very important, we may get the Bible study, we may even get someone to come with us to worship. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that some. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's one of the things in my class and sermon we'll be talking about tomorrow is, is an environment for growth basically, and also an environment of how do we treat visitors when they walk in the door? You know, there are those who I've seen. I've seen personally. I'm not saying here. I'm saying I've seen personally when people some walks in the door, and I see someone going to address them, and I thought, oh, what are they going to say? What are they going to say? Because I don't know what they're going to come out of their mouth. They could say anything. It could be good. It could be some of the most ridiculous things that they say when they meet a new person. Not everyone has the great has great people skills. There are certain things when you when you address visitors, especially the very first time they come in, that should never come out of our mouth. Uh, we cannot be those when we have a visitor coming in who we know is not a Christian, uh, even if they are a Christian. That we we do not we should not judge people upon appearance alone. That's a really big one. Uh, you know, when we have a non-Christian come into the church building, we shouldn't be surprised when a non-Christian acts like a non-Christian. I mean, how, how else would we expect them to act? We don't expect them to come in and act like a, a New Testament Christian because they're not one. And so we have to, part of that environment for growth is having the right attitude about people who come in to visit with us. Because if we're not friendly, if we're not inviting, if we're not encouraging, I want to come back. Would you? I mean, so we have to think about that as well. Any other comments, questions? All right, then I'm going to let Mike say what he wants. Just a few thoughts here in a few minutes we have left. Uh, We do have the Bates Back to the Bible series here. And if you're not aware of where they're at, they're downstairs in the main area where we had the food earlier along that wall. They're up on the racks there. So if you are needing uh, help with that, I always do believe you should familiarize yourself with the study material before presenting it to somebody else. I think about uh, care and how important that is to show to others. And, and when we're gonna reach out to our own family or to our neighbors, especially those loved ones that are close to us, care has to be shown. And we can do that either through word, like cards, emails, text, vocal or we could do it through deeds as uh, Zach had pointed out about the children like uh, raking the next door neighbors leaves we can show that we care through our service to others and so uh, obviously uh, if we want to really reach out and make a difference and try and better our chances in a Bible study uh, with a non-Christian then we should show that we care I certainly agree with JJ's uh, comment with examples. And uh, in the real estate business or sales marketing, you are encouraged to practice your, uh, you go through transcripts, if you will, practice what you're gonna say to somebody. Uh, Go back and forth, you get a partner and you play back and forth, if you will. 
And if this is what it takes to help you build confidence to gain, to go out and reach your neighbor or your family member or whoever, then I suggest you do. But JJ is exactly right. Uh, anything we want to accomplish takes practice and it takes effort on our part. We have to know the material, we have to practice presenting the material, and then our results may be a lot more rewarding, uh, a lot better chance of actually happening. And so certainly, and you know, we had a, a last week in the gospel meeting, I don't know how many were aware, Jake had invited a coworker here uh, to the gospel meeting that had actually came. And, and so you see where that works and it's upon us as we talk about the environment and Russ may get into this more tomorrow, but we each and every member here should make every effort to get to any visitor that comes through our door. If they've made the effort to get through the door, that's on us to get to them. And so that's all I have. I'm gonna ask uh, Andrew, do you mind coming forward and leading us in prayer? And as mentioned, we'll have the uh, class tomorrow morning, uh, the junior high and high school will be up here and any parent that wants their child up here will be fine. Thank Andrew. you, speakers, for coming. Yes, thank you, Zach and Russ, for coming.